The sun will come out this morning And there'll be pond building all day longing There'll be ponds Oh, when I think of a day that's gray and miserable I just look over here and there's an excavator the sun will come out and we will be building all kinds of crocodile enclosures with Gaudio. We love when there's big machines. Oh yeah, here we go. All right, anyway, enough of that horse. Okay, it's just after lunch here, friends. And uh, as you can see, some boulders are starting to be placed inside. They put in the geocloth, the liner, and then the padding to keep the boulders from uh, pinching the uh, liner. But uh, up there is our wetland area. The filter is gonna be right in there. They're gonna start assembling. We got beach entries. This whole thing is gonna be transformed here. These guys are gonna get to work. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up some uh, cement because we're gonna fill it in here, okay? We're gonna put it in here, and what we have made are these caves. And they're gonna allow water to flow through. Look at this, they're gonna allow water to flow through, but we put this rebar in here, it'll stop the caiman from being able to co-mingle. So we're gonna have the trigonotus and the palparosis uh, in separate enclosures. So you'll see when we get this going. Well, the universe was created in an explosion, and that's pretty much what my backyard looks like, an explosion. But because of that explosion, we have got probably the coolest Cayman habitat. It's already clearing out nicely. It's crazy, I'm shocked. Wow, look at this, guys. There's Ed the Pond Professor. It is early morning. This was one heck of a build. Usually, uh, Ed would cruise down here with a army of men, but this time we had a skeleton crew, but what a yep. talented crew you brought. That's all that matters. Yeah. Right team, uh, the right setting, the right, uh, you know, the right palette, as yeah. well as the animals. Oh my I gosh, mean, it's, it's so it. cool. Creating something unique for the, those Caymans, incredible. Yeah, and I guess we're gonna dub this Cayman Creek. I'm gonna get a sign made, That's it's gonna awesome. be really I cool. Love it. So let's get into this video. I just want to do a walkthrough of yeah. the pond. Um, you guys will be able to see some really cool time lapse of how this project came together. But, um, you know, for this video, it is an early morning on a Friday, undescribed Friday. <laughs> um, you guys showed up on Monday, but we're able to accomplish this in just one week. Yeah. I think um, we had the guys from Pondscapes 
Yep. Uh, to Lou and Tony from Pondscapes, yep. we had Gaudio. Gaudio. Uh, we also had Aaron Chico. Yep. Um, and uh, you, I worked, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> you nonstop. Know? And uh, we had Bruno. Yeah, and uh, Bruno, out, that's out right. Of, uh, out of Jersey. There he is. Bruno, what's uh, up? Yeah, yeah. And of course, Lisa and Kevin from Aquascape, their media team, they got dirty as well. So <laughs> let's have a look, Ed, and yep. let's talk about what makes this feature so unique. Well, starting out here up at the top. So when you were talking about creating a series of, uh, like, uh, telling me about the Cay Caymans. Let's right. start there first. You were telling me about the Caymans. Jungle animal. Right. You know, little jungle pools. They're not like out in a big open marsh or swamp or anything like that. Series of little cascading jungle pools. So this is the idea. They're all different depths. <clears throat> so with this one here, 18 to 24 inches. That, six to eight inches. The other one, about 12 inches. Then we're back down to 24 inches and yeah. back up to eight inches. Yeah. So all these different elevations just made a lot of fun. And then dropping in these big logs and stuff like that. So those, uh, the Caymans can kind of climb up, bask on those logs, uh, just kind of survey their property yep. as well as have access to all of the space around it. This yeah. is massive. It's really Huge. cool. So, so dwarf caiman um, are very uh, interesting animals. As Ed was mentioning, they're a jungle animal. They're the most terrestrial of crocodilians. Uh, the two species of dwarf caiman, the smooth front and the um, uh, and uh, 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 the dwarf caiman. Uh, but what's really cool about this, this is our wetland, guys. This is just like in my recreation pond. Uh, however, we made it deeper so that it could become a usable habitat for one of the dwarf caiman. And I love that. And as Ed also mentioned, you know, my fence is going to start right at the corner of the building and wrap around this large elevated piece of uh, soil here, this large kind of plateau, you know, um, and it's going to join again. So I'm going to plant all this out. We're going to get water plants in here. That's going to aid in the yeah. in the filtration. Right. But we were just remarking how this is only one evening and we can see the bottom of the wetland. So that's fantastic. Oh, when we turned it on yesterday, it looked like chocolate milk. I yeah. mean, it was like a, a dark creamy brown yeah. because of all the rain and the soil and sediment and stuff we were bringing through here. That's really well <clears throat> it's done. It's unbelievable. Man. Yeah. And actually, I mean, looking at this now, um, this would in, be an incredible pool full of fish as well. well and you could load up, you know, get be. some really cool funky fish up in here. Yep. Uh, all the different pools, different little micro What I'm thinking of doing is since these are South American animals, mm -hmm. I'd love to stick with South American fish and South American turtles That'd in be here. That'd cool. Uh, make it a really cool South American river system. Yeah. So that's something that I'm really hyped on doing. Okay, so check it out, everyone. We're going to move down. Um, but again, remember, we'll have this perimeter fence, but over in this area, is something unique that Ed did so that we have a flow through, but you created an area that I'm gonna be able to build a fence over right. because we have smaller dwarf came in here and then the trigonotus came in are gonna be in these pools and I don't want the two to mingle yeah. because uh, the larger ones could potentially injure the smaller ones or, or sometimes in some cases eat them. But right here, check it out. We've got this awesome cave all right, two culverts, and in those culverts are rebar, and the rebar is gonna keep each respective species on their side of the barrier. But the water continues to flow through. Another cool little uh, tweak that Ed came up with was there's actually caves in there. So one of the caiman can swim into the cave and relax and get out of the sun, but he can't swim all the way through to the other pools or the other enclosure and vice versa one of the caiman on this side can swim deep into a cave which terminates right there uh so really fantastic and of course we utilize just down trees i had a lightning strike on one of my trees blew off a major branch a major branch of this tree and uh we just kind of used it we used gaudio's cat uh fantastic machine to drag it over here it really helped having these machines. Also shout out to my buddy Ruben. Uh, Ruben built the gator enclosure. He lent us his bobcat. Um, so that was just an invaluable, those two machines were invaluable pieces of equipment. But look at this, all the rock we have here. Just amazing flow. I can't believe it's that clear. I can't, I can't either. It's insane. I'm blown away. Um, Oh, we forgot to mention a beach. Yeah, really We've got really point. haul outs. You know, talking with my buddy John Bruggen from the uh, St. Augustine Alligator Farm. Yeah. 
he mentioned, you know, not a lot of people consider yeah. um, beach exits and entries for crocodilians uh, when they build their habitats. And there's nowhere on earth right. where it's just always one sheer, like a, a four sides of a pool yeah. are sheer. There's always going to be a natural eroded area. Yeah. And so Ed, again, feathering his cap that he's not wearing, a little disappointed. <laughs> I gave him a hat. Anyway, um, there it is little beach entry we're gonna of course grade this there's a lot of work to be done here that's all my job i'm gonna really get busy here in the next week and just smooth all this out yep. plant it out yep. we're gonna have big traveler's palms here you see that big bushy plant right there the big traveler's palm we're gonna plant a few of them along the side of the warehouse so it obscures the warehouse and it just disappears into green but let's keep going down cayman creek here man this is cool the uh, the aquascape Cayman Creek, I love it. Um, <laughs> of course, it's an ecosystem build. Everything you guys build is yeah. working with nature's yep. most powerful filtration. Yeah. We have the wetland, the yep. plants, bacteria. We inoculated it yesterday yeah. with a bacteria pack. Yep. Um, so that's really fantastic. Another important part is that little waterfall. Okay, <laughs> what is that doing, Ed? So I remember when you were talking about it, you were creating these grades. You came in and brought in all that fill because this was originally flat. Yes. Relatively, yeah, right? Yeah, we were <laughs> close to three and a half foot lower. Right. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So by having this raised up a little bit, creates a nice little separation between the two pools but that allows us to do the waterfall, which is really important for, a, for an ecosystem style feature because it brings in dissolved oxygen. Awesome, so the, the, uh, the filter itself is actually consuming oxygen as it breaks down all types of you know leaf debris, waste from animals, waste from fish. It needs, it's, it's highly aerobic, just like us. Okay. Little microorganisms, they are sucking up oxygen. That helps to put it back in. That's very cool. So yep. it's, it's just churning the water. It's putting that oxygen back into the water. So it's gonna be great for fish. I'm really excited to stock this out. We're gonna let this cycle. I'm gonna let this, uh, I'm gonna take my time with it and let it really, sure. uh, not, not necessarily mature, but we need the water quality to get better for right. fish. We need some plants to get established. Yep. I think that's gonna be very important for the fish. Really quick side note, we were considering ripping out this beautiful mango tree, but instead I trimmed it down, trimmed it back a bit. This will become a very large fruit. It already bears fruit, but a very large shade tree. Um, being that they're jungle animals, these animals don't want, the caiman don't want just being pelted with sunlight. They live in canopy. They're nocturnal. They're going to come out at night. They're going to walk around on land. It's going to be a really unique habitat to see and watch their natural behaviors. I can't think of any other, uh, you know, crocodilian exhibit that is more fine-tuned right. with the thought that you put into this uh, to, to really uh, enhance a species you know um, behavior so this is really really cool so now we're into the larger these the two came in that are larger they're five maybe five and a half foot so they're still kind of small caiman yeah uh, but look at this one two and even the intake bay is a pool that the caiman can use so every bit of the water feature is is usable to the animal it's exciting you guys put in a jet another pump in here yeah. that is just pushing the water up from this really deep pool um and your reason being sometimes when you make these deep pools it's a space where debris can collect <laughs> exactly it becomes a sediment trap so as water is coming down all these different pools it's going to want to settle out in the deepest area this is the deepest pool that we have so we wanted to have that jet in there just to kind of agitate that stuff create an upwelling area so that's going to bring nutrients it's going to oxidize everything it's going to push it over into that intake bay where it actually could be managed by the pumps and the rest of the filtration system it's so cool man this whole thing is and that doesn't run, need to run con continuously that's right. the beauty of that filter up there always 24 7. yep but then i can just if i notice there's leaves and things that have been collected from the trees i just turn the pump on it'll push them up and they'll flow right in we used um you know a lot of rock that i had you guys may remember there was a bunch of rock over by that uh fence now that is gone we've got a lot more dirt um just there's all the rock pile right so i ordered more rock when i didn't 
Need as much. Don't tell Tom. Anyway, uh, we'll use that. I'm sure there'll be another feature Always. somewhere in the future. We got to take a break. Uh, yeah. Uh, but but like somewhere down the line, I'm sure that's going to get used. Um, of course, Aquascape and Camp Cannon have had a long and fruitful friendship so far. And I, I jokingly keep saying to Ed that this is like Aqualand South. So it's like there's showrooms in the South part of the States. But um, really cool, love the flow. Can you guys imagine when we get these Cayman, when you see them just kind of walking up through this little stream here and they're just using the whole area. We've got this incredible tree. They can just kind of hide down there in that little well. They can climb back out. We're gonna put tortoises in here because the Cayman aren't large enough that they're gonna really hurt any mm -hmm. adult tortoises. There's just no way. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be really cool to have tortoises, red foots or maybe yellow foots, South American species just wandering around here, nibbling up all of the different uh, weeds that are gonna be growing, different vines. So it's gonna be really, really cool to have this thing uh, fully dialed. And I can tell you this log right oh, here, awesome. look at that overhang, man. There's gonna be a gator wedged up, excuse me, a caiman wedged <laughs> up underneath that for sure. So he made it to where it overhangs. There's a pocket in there. A uh, lot of detail, a lot of thought. These guys are artists that work uh, with nature as the template and mimicking nature, as he would say, biomimicry is one of the most important things you can do when building these ecosystems. Absolutely, replicating nature um, by having some of those uh, logs and things like that in there. The other thing that it does not only makes naturalizes it, makes it fit better with the species, but it brings a different surface into the system. So what I mean by that is we have the big boulders, we got river rock, um, there are certain bacteria, microorganisms that are going to be associated and really love rocky surfaces. There are completely different species that are going to go on wood. Okay. So by doing that, again, when you look at an ecosystem, uh, the key to its success is biodiversity. Having lots of different organisms living together symbiotically, that's what nature does. You mm. go into a rainforest, it's exactly what you're going to see. You're going to see rock, you're going to see sand, you're going to see mud, you're going to see trees, aquatic vegetation, all these different things. And when you put all those different layers in, it works. Oh man, this is so cool. We're going to walk down to the final pool where the water terminates and gets sent back up into the wetland. Um, really cool stuff here as well. Like I said, usually guys, these intake bays um, aren't necessarily designed uh, to actually be usable habitat. They're kind of, you know, yeah. just, they're just a system. Most Functional. Of, right, functional. But this was designed to actually house the animal too. Um, you'll also notice that you know the way that the stream kind of turns and bends when dealing with crocodilians you like to break up their eye line their eyesight uh so that in case there's an argument between crocodilians oh, um they will not see each other if they want to move away so i will find more logs i'll find more things to dress this up but if you look down here if i'm a crocodilian at water level with my eyes just at water level like this I can't necessarily see up and see my, uh, my habitat mate if I want to get away from them. That's a good thing. But nice. check it out. So here is our pump vault. That's where the pumps are housed, right here. Okay, so that is, there are two aqua surge pumps are in uh, there? Are they are, new pumps? These are SLD pumps. So okay. this is a solids handling. Wow. But, it, but it is adjustable like the aqua surge. So still energy efficient, but it can handle larger solids. Okay. So I knew with these animals, um, we might have some larger debris and things like that. that he means larger poop, I think is what he's talking about. <laughs> a giant turd from a dwarf caiman. Even a dwarf caiman turd is huge. Yes. So we'll, we need something that can handle it. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, very cool. So that'll be able to handle it. All right, very cool. What do you guys think of the new Cayman Creek? Nice. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> so the kids just woke up. Like I said, it's early here in the morning, so we'll put this back on. And we've inverted this because they make this really cool faux rock cover. And what I'll probably do is place a larger rock on top of this to support it so the Cayman can't move it. Uh, we also have water beetles already. Come There's on, a water what? beetle in here. Yeah, I just saw it. Watch this. There's a little water beetle. If I, there he goes. He just, Whoa. isn't that cool? That's incredible. Well, it's Florida, man. Um, wow. You know, what's interesting with Florida is right now we're in the dry season. Um, so you have a lot of animals here in Florida that 
um, with the fluctuation of going from wet to dry, yeah. you have animals that need to have some kind of uh, terrestrial habitat uh, or terrestrial uh, behavior yeah. or ability to get to these water holes, yeah. right? Yeah. So when water holes pop up, these animals better, that's they incredible. find it. They yeah, find it quick. Incredible. It's really cool. Wow. So we've got some valves over here. You made it inhospitable. Uh, you know, you, you said you wanted to make it a little bit more difficult for the caiman to kind of get over in this area to maybe dissuade them. And that's when I mentioned to you that dwarf <laughs> caiman are not threatened. Um, and that's because, not threatened uh, with poaching, because their osteoderms are very heavy on their skin, on their skin, mm. on their bellies. When they take leather for uh, the skin trade, they take it from the bellies of crocodilians. So alligator and um, saltwater crocodiles, Nile crocodiles, their belly scales are actually, there's little to no osteoderms mm. in it, so they can tan it very easily. Got it. But because the dwarf caiman species are terrestrial nature gave them that suit of armor underneath when they walk over things okay they're not just sliding into to uh, muddy banks they're walking over rocky streams That's and cool. pools and and they have to worry about jaguar and all kinds of stuff so they got to be an armored little beast and that's exactly what they are. So they're not gonna have any problem okay. rummaging through here. It doesn't matter though. The other thing we originally were gonna buy, uh, just cut this off so I would be able to work with the pumps without having to be in this enclosure. But um, once we realized it was, you know, to be perfectly honest, that could have been done, yeah. but it was going to add hours and hours to the build. And I just had to make a decision and say, you know what guys, I'm brave enough to get in there and mess with the pumps if I have to. It would make for a great video, right? So um, what we did instead is utilize the really cool um, faux stump that Aquascape makes. I've turned these into hides for my animals, but look at this. All the electric, all the pump controls, everything that is here, including this really, this is something I'm very excited about. Uh, this is actually a thermometer that hooks up to an app on my iPhone, and I'm able to check temperatures from my phone of the water in the ecosystem. So that's incredible. But we have both pumps right here. We have an ion gen uh, system that if I notice there's a little too much algae, I turn this on and it actually can kill algae in the water uh, without hurting the fish or the animals. Of course, electric and uh, this thing is dialed. So really cool fiberglass hollow stump that I've also turned into hides. Uh, Inky has this as one of her hides and I have some Fluker uh, heat mat oh, and cool. it actually holds heat uh, and I've got a little cool. door on the other side, but really good stuff. So uh, just an incredible, um, incredible build. And now it's time for me to just uh, sing the praises of uh, my friends at Aquascape. You know, Greg Woodstock, the pond guy, uh, if I didn't bump into him at that Turtle and Tortoise Preservation Group when he just bound it in, uh, I don't know what Camp Kennan would look at. And of course, Ed, I mean, these guys are great, but I have to say thank you to the guys that just, you know, they give up their time. A lot of it is to work, you know, and learn, yeah. you know, new techniques, new techniques. from you. Yep. Um, but, you know, the work, is challenging it's hard the sun's beating down on you all day you're moving rock so these guys are really they're 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 just incredibly generous to spend their time here uh to help create this incredible uh water feature and i i appreciate each and every one of them so thank you aaron um thank you to um you know uh lou and uh, Tony, yo, Tony, he's not even from New York. I think he's from Ohio, but I like to say, yo, Tony, hey, oh, thanks. From Pondscapes and Gaudio, thank you for your machine. Um, I said, and Bruno over there, he's waving. I don't know why he's way the hell over there. He's welcome uh, to be a part of it. He's out of uh, South Jersey. Uh, what's the name of your uh, pond company, buddy? Pond Pros out of South Jersey. If you're looking for a really cool water feature, he's one of the artisans that built this. So um, these guys work their butts off and I just wanted to really shout them out. Um, so thanks a lot. Uh, don't forget to follow Ed, the Pond Professor, right here on YouTube. If you want to see this build in, in all the yeah, intricacies, all the details, all the details yep. for you pond nerds. Uh, I know there's a lot of you that watch this channel. If you want to learn how to create something like this, please, 
go check out his channel check out greg the pond guy's channel their links will be in the description below and uh don't forget to follow them on instagram as well and all the socials uh thank you all right buddy always a pleasure I really, do, I really appreciate what you do and uh my gosh can you believe this how you what do you guys think let me know in the comments below the cayman gonna be stoked um are you excited i got a lot more work to do you'll be there every step of the way cannot wait hopefully we can get ed back when we put the cayman in here that would be all the ultimate so absolutely get on get on the travel <laughs> budget there see if you can get another flight back down to florida in a couple of weeks all right everyone have a great day stay safe be cool huh. no one's gonna be as cool as these cayman we'll talk to you guys later